Hello, it's been a while since I made a video, and uh, what I'd like to show you today is how to match up two or more similar rackets uh, so that they all play the same. To begin with, what you want to do is start out with the same rackets. Both of these are head microgel radical mid plus rackets, and to match them up, all you need to do is match up the static weight so that they all weigh the same. The balance point and the moment of inertia. A lot of people talk about swing weight and twist weight and uh, that's pretty easy too if you know the moment of inertia. If I take the racket and twist it this way along the center line that runs from the butt of the racket to the head of the racket, that's the twist weight. So if I were to measure the moment of inertia for this particular racket my moment of inertia on this axis is the twist weight. Swing weight now is a little bit different. The moment of inertia is about this axis where I'm rotating it around the center of mass. All right, In this direction, not this direction. When they measure swing weight, they'll normally come down the handle at a 10 centimeter point and then they'll use the parallel axis theorem and take the distance from that 10 centimeter point to the center of mass squared times the mass of the rocket. To keep everything simple, if your moment of inertias are the same, your static weight is the same, and your balance is the same, all the rockets are perfectly matched. Here's a worksheet that I'm going to use, and what I've got here on the, up in this corner is a picture that I stole, uh, plagiarized, whatever you want to call it, out of the Swing Tool app. And the Swing Tool app, which is made, or which was made by Sten Kaiser, uh, is what I used to actually check the moment of inertia on a tennis racket. There's a couple of key points here that I want to point out to you. Right here you've got the hang point. I'm normally going to use the top string on a tennis racket. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to measure the distance in centimeters from the butt cap of the racket up to the top string. And because that string is going to be my axis point, I want to measure the center of that top string. Then I've got my balance point. For the balance point, I'm just going to use a uh, balance board that I made. And that balance point is the distance from where the racket balances, again, to the butt of the racket. The weight, I'm just going to use a, a scale, and I'm going to measure it in grams. I'm using what's called a GCS system, which is grams, centimeters, and seconds. So uh, all of these measurements that I make here are going to be in either grams or centimeters. For the seconds, I'm not really using it, but it is used to identify the period of how fast the racket swings or how slow the racket swings, one way or the other. Okay, my swing point down here, like I said before, is uh, a point on the racket that you want to use to to compute your swing weight. And sometimes they'll use 10 centimeters, sometimes they'll use 4 inches. I believe that Bobolot uses something less than 10 centimeters, which is about 9.8 centimeters. And that distance that they're talking about is the distance from the butt of the racket. What I'm going to do to get the moment of inertia is I'm going to use the balance point. The balance point is going to be the same as my swing point down here. And I'm just going to record all that information for both rockets right here. At the bottom of this worksheet, I'm going to identify over here how much weight I need to add at what locations. And over here, how that weight that I added at specific locations changes the moment of inertia for a tennis racket. This will be for racket one down here. This will be for racket two down here. 
To begin with, I've made myself a jig here that I'm going to use for checking the balance. It's actually nothing more than a simple balance beam. Uh, the board is a 1 by 4 inch 2 foot board. Up here I've got two uh, sections of a 5 gallon paint bucket paddle. And on the end over here, I don't know if you can see them or not, there's two little hooks that I use to hang my racket on so I can rotate my racket and check the uh, moment of inertia. I'm going to put my dowel rod in here now. And the distance from outside to outside of these two paint paddles is 8 centimeters. So the center of it is 4 centimeters from either edge. And all I do is I lay my racket on there and I adjust it until I find out where that racket balances. Then I'll measure the distance from here to the butt of the racket. Just put my tape measure here, go all the way out to the butt of the racket, and that gives me the balance point on my tennis racket. I've got some scales now that measure within one gram increments. Uh, I'm planning on getting me one that will measure within at least a tenth of a gram because I think it will be a little bit more accurate. I'm going to put it on the grams scale and I'm just going to weigh the racket. This one's 333 grams. The other one is 328 grams. To identify my hang point now, I'll just measure from the butt of the racket all the way up to the center of the top string and that appears to be 64.3 centimeters. The other racket is also 64.3 centimeters and unless you've distorted the frames while you're stringing them the distance from the butt to that top string should be the same for both rackets. Alright, here's what I've got for the two rackets right now. Uh, if I look at the one with the black grip, it, the hang point is the same on both rackets. If I look at the balance, the black grip has a balance point of 32.6 and the blue grip has a balance point of 32.3. The weight, there's a 5 gram difference. The blue grip is lighter. So to bring the weights up to the same, I need to add weight to the racket with the blue grip because the balance point is lower on this racket. I'll have to add the weight to the head of the racket to raise the swing weight up to 32.6. To adjust my balance now, I'm going to, uh, because I've got a 4 centimeter offset up here, I'm going to measure down 28.6 centimeters from the butt of the racket, or excuse me, from where I want the center of mass to be to the butt of the racket. And then I'm going to uh, use some little pieces of cardboard that I cut off of a paper plate. All of these weigh eight grams and there's eight up, excuse me. Yeah. All of these weigh eight grams and there's eight of them, so each one weighs about three grams. So I'm going to take five of them, and that's the weight that I need to add this rack to this racket to get the racket up to the same weight as the other racket, the one with the black grip. I'm just going to put, let me try four, and I'm going to add the weight to the head just to see what'll happen. When I do that, it goes down. So I'm going to counterbalance down here with another gram. And while wow, that's close, let me move this. Whoa, just that little bit made that much difference. Alright, I'm going to put these so that they're just about centered. That's just about centered. I'm going to put this one down here a little bit further. That's balanced, or not quite. That's about as close as I'm going to possibly get. 
Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to measure to the center from the butt of the racket to each one of these groups of paper. So now I'm going to hold this down so it doesn't move. And that looks like about 3.2 centimeters. Up here now, I'm going to put my weight all the way up here at the top, just on the inside of the frame. So I want to measure here to 67.2 centimeters. Okay, let's see what I've got here now. Remember now that I took the blue racket. How could you forget? It was just a minute ago. It was longer than that for me, but it was not very long for you. Uh, I took the blue racket now, and I added uh, 5 grams of weight. I added 1 gram at 3.2 centimeters from the butt, which is 29.4 centimeters from the new balance point of 32.6. And I added 4 grams at 67.2 centimeters from the butt, which is 34.9 centimeters from the new balance point. So if I were to take the square of 3.2 times 0 0.001 kilograms and add to that the square of 60, excuse me, 34.9 times 0 .004 kilograms, which is the weight I added to the head, it will increase my moment of inertia by 5.7 kilograms per centimeter squared. So now what I need to do is check the moment of inertia of the tennis rackets and see if the moment of inertia of both rackets is the same. Because the balance point is different right here and the weight's different, I doubt very seriously they're going to be the same. Okay, I'm in the Swing Tool app now on my iPad and I'm going to enter the information for the black grip racket in Swing Tool. My swing point is 64.3. So I simply touch this area, put in 64.3. Whoops, fat fingered that one. My balance point is 32.6. All right, my weight is 333 grams. And my swing point is the same as my balance point because I'm looking for the moment of inertia and not the swing weight. If I wanted the swing weight, I'd put in 10 points down here. All right, so I'm going to put in. 32.6. All right, click done. Done up here, and then I can go into actually checking my uh, tennis racket. Before I do that, let me show you what uh, else I need to do. I'm going to go to preview, and right here there's a little uh, camera on the back of it. It looks like it's down at the, no, it's up at the top. You can see where my finger goes past there. What you want to do is you want to position your tennis racket so that this little square right here is pointing straight at the handle on that tennis racket. One thing that I found out is that uh, if you've got a dark colored grip, it doesn't work very well because of the lighting and everything. So what I do is take a small piece of tissue paper, a single ply, and I scotch tape it to the grip. That white background uh, is picked up by the camera very, very readily and you get a very accurate reading. So now I'm going to check the swing weight on the black and then the blue uh, grip tennis racket. Uh, I hope you can see now that I've got the uh, tissue paper on the handle of the racket. I've got this uh, aimed good. So now I'm going to go back to the swing weight and I'm going to move this and just let it rock a couple of times. Let me see if I can get in there and just hit start. 
You can see the little white circle as it goes around and that'll tell you that it's picking up each individual period of that tennis racket. All right, it tells me that the moment of inertia for that tennis racket is 156. If you look in the upper left hand corner of this box down here, it'll tell you the period for that particular racket. And if you look over here, it'll give you the percentage of error. Okay, now I've got the Blue Grip tennis racket. I've already changed uh, my setup and checked my preview. Everything is good to go. So I'm just going to rock my tennis racket again and then hit the start button. The black grip was 156. Let's see what this one is. Actually if you check these a couple of times you'll come out uh, usually the same every time you check it. I checked the other one twice and it came out to 156 both times. This one's 148. I'm going to do it again just to see what happens. So I'm going to start my oscillations again, start it all over again, see what happens. Remember this is the lighter racket so it should be a little bit lower. One forty-eight both times. Let me show you what I've done now. Initially when I added weight to even out the balance, I added 5.7 units to the moment of inertia uh, when I added the weight. When I computed the swing weights, the black grip was 156, the blue grip was 148. The 5.7 units would have given me, let's just average this out and say it was 8, 154. So I have to add two more uh, units to the moment of inertia to do that. I can add 2.1 units by adding 1 gram at 3.2 centimeters and one more gram at 67.2 centimeters, which was the same point that I added the weights before. I don't know if you remember it or not though, when I added those weights, even though it was just a one gram weight, moving it probably a half a centimeter throws off the balance. So this is just approximate dis distances. What you'll have to do is play around with uh, that one gram that you're adding so that you don't change the balance and you bring it up by two kilograms per centimeter squared. All right, Then you'll end up with two rackets both having a, a moment of inertia of 156. One more point that I'd like to point out is they would all weigh uh, 300, both rackets would weigh 335 grams and they'd have a center of mass of 32.6. If I want to increase my moment of inertia or decrease my balance point or increase my balance point, I could do that by just adding weight onto the racket. Because the mass, the balance, and the moment of inertia are all the same, whatever I do to one racket, I have to do the, to the other, and everything still remains the same. So if I add grips, or if I add a vibration dampener, or if I add weight into the uh, handle of the racket, if I add weight to the head of the racket, as long as I do it the same on both of them, everything remains the same. Okay, what I've been doing so far is checking the moment of inertia about the swinging axis of the racket in this direction and not about the center line. 
you want to check the moment of inertia on the center line, you could take a piece of string, make sure it's centered, and just uh, spread it out. If you get it closer together, like the hooks that I was using the other way, it'll start getting all wobbly and messed up on you. But just bring it out and then just rotate it this way and measure the moment of inertia for that tennis racket. All right. One thing you want to make sure of now is this is your axis up here at the top where I've got that straight piece of string. You want to make sure that that axis there is perfectly parallel to the center line of this racket or that the racket is horizontal. That's all you need to check. Then your hang point is going to be the distance from this top string up here to the center of the racket. I hope that helps you. If you got any questions in the description, I'm going to put a link to a, a thread that I put in the Tennis Warehouse form. Uh, ask them there and uh, we'll see if we can't get your questions answered for you. Have a nice day.